Hey everybody, welcome into this lecture video on first order initial value problems and Euler's method. In the couple of lecture videos that preceded this one in the notes today, uh, there is discussion about what it means to be a differential, a first order differential equation, a first order initial value problem, and what exactly is Euler's method. So in this lecture, I'm just gonna show you guys how to use a computer to approximate the solution to one of these. This is the initial value problem that I've chosen. It's y prime equals x minus y times y squared. And the initial value is y of zero equals one. So this is the starting point. And we would like to plot the slope field and then use Euler's method to approximate the solution on this interval. It doesn't tell us here a slope, uh, a step size. So we'll have to choose that on our own, but I'm just gonna work through this and show you how this all goes. Now, um, it is not required for this course that you know how to use a computer programming language, but most of you are gonna go into fields and, and you're majoring in fields that actually, when you get into the real world and you're gonna do math, you're gonna use a computer to do it for you. So this is an example of one way that you could do that. So I'm using a programming language called Sage Math. As you can see down here, Sage Math 9.0 is the kernel, and it's all in the syntax of Python. So I'm in a IPy, IPython notebook. Um, Jupyter notebook. So let's get started. We want to plot the slope field first. The first thing we're going to do is define our variables. Now x is always uh, predefined as a variable, but, but y is not. So we're going to define both of them. It doesn't hurt to redefine x as a variable. So we're going to define x and y as our variables. And then we need to define the right-hand side of our first order differential equation. Remember, it's possible that your differential equation could have the y prime mixed up with the other variables, but this one's already solved for y prime. And so the right-hand side of this equation is gonna be f. So we'll say f equals, and then very carefully type this in, x minus y times y squared. You can use a caret here for the exponent, or you can just use a double star, double asterisk as I have. And now the slope field or the direction field, as it's sometimes called, has a built-in command in Sage. This is, I like Sage because it's got all kinds of built-in stuff you don't have to preload. Um, you know, other people prefer to just pick the packages they want from Python. Um, but again, I like everything to already be there. So I'm naming this SF for slope field and the command here is plot slope field. So if you type the first few letters and hit tab, plot slope field, we're gonna plot the slope field for F, that's our right-hand side of our differential equation. And then we need to give it uh, range for X and for Y. So the X definitely has to go from zero to four. That's what we're told, right? We don't really know what Y should do yet, so we can always change this later, but let's start with Y going from zero to six, let's say. Uh, now, when you run that, nothing happens, but we wanna look at the slope field. So there's SF right there. So there's the slope field. It just plots a, a, a bunch of line segments of length one that have the slope uh, indicated by the differential equation, by that function F. So there's, there's a picture of our slope field. Now you can kind of imagine we're gonna, our initial condition that we're gonna use for our Euler's method it, or for the initial value problem, right? Is y of zero equals one. So when x is zero, y is supposed to be one. It's gonna start here. And now you can almost picture how this thing is gonna flow. It's gonna come, so it's gonna start here. You're gonna go down a little bit, kind of level off, but then make a turn. This is what we expect, right? If we believe the slope field. And then some weird stuff might happen up here. It's not clear. It's probably gonna wiggle back and forth up here because these slopes are pretty erratic around this point, right? Around this, this uh, it looks kind of like a line, right? Or this curved, this curved portion right here. It's pretty erratic. So we can imagine what it's gonna look like, but we wanna actually compute it now. So that, that's where Euler's method comes in. Now, I believe that Sage has a built-in Euler's method, but I wanna write the algorithm myself because I wanna make sure that it's doing it the way that we've talked about in our class, right? So Euler's method, what does it do? It takes tiny steps in the x direction. So the first thing I'm gonna do, well, we're, we're gonna define the function, but um, it takes steps of length h in the x direction. And then, so in other words, it breaks up the interval here into a partition. It's basic standard idea that we, we shouldn't be surprised by, right? And then it updates the new y values based on the slope right, based on the prescribed slope of the differential equation. It's exactly what a first order differential equation tells you. It tells you what the new slope should be at every point, right, or what the slope of the solution curve, the instantaneous slope, should be at every single point, right? So let's do it. Um, we need to be very careful how we define everything, but so we're gonna start, we're gonna define our function here. 
we'll just call it Euler, and we need to give it some inputs. Well, what are we going to give it for our inputs? We're going to give it the right-hand side of our differential equation, DE. Uh, we can just call this F, right? We're going to give it our initial conditions, IC, ICs, initial conditions. We need to give it the step size, and we need to give it the number of, of steps that we're going to take. So step size, number of steps, initial conditions, differential equation. All right. Well, the first thing we're going to do, we're going to define uh, two arrays. We're going to define the x's and the y's. So the first x value is the initial condition. So hopefully the initial condition is it's going to have to be given as a list to us um, with two entries, right? The initial x and the initial y. So our first x value is the initial one. And then same thing for the y. Our initial y value is going to be to turn, given right by the initial condition as well. So there's the first point. Now we need to update all of these. So now we need to make a loop and we're gonna let the loop go uh, the number of steps that we're told, that was N, right? So for K in range N, we are gonna update each of these. So our XX is gonna be what we call appended. We're gonna add on to it. And what are we gonna do? We're gonna, where the next term is gonna be the initial term or the previous term plus H, right? So the previous term plus H. So we've defined these so they all have at least one entry. We take the last entry, that's what this negative one index means. It means the last entry in the list and we're gonna add H to it. So there we go, that updates the X's. The Y's, uh, so the X's are all evenly spaced, right? That's the whole idea. We, we evenly spaced the, the X's, no big deal. Now we need to update the Y's. The Y's depend on that slope field, right? On, this, on the differential equation itself. So let's do it. Our y's are updated, append, by doing what? We take the previous y value, and again, there's a lecture on this, so I'm not gonna, if you need to go th back through the theory of all this, please watch the previous video uh, on Euler's method. But we take the previous y value and we add a tiny step uh, in the direction of the slope field, right? So it's gonna be a tiny step uh, h, right, times the slope, and the slope is gonna be f, but we have to substitute in here our x and our y values from the previous point, right? So x is gonna be equal to the previous x value and y is gonna be equal to the previous y value. And then it'll update our y's. So that's it, we're done with the loop. And at this point we will have a two, two lists. You can think of these as like long vectors or something, but two lists uh, and those are actually the answers that we want. So we're gonna take these as, as our output. So we're gonna return xx, yy. So there's our Euler's method predefined for us now. Now let's do it, right? So um, here's what I'll do. I'm gonna name the outputs. I've already named these xx and yy. Let's call it something different. Let's call it a and b. And a and b, let's do Euler of our differential equation, f with our initial conditions, x is zero, y is one. If, you, if we forget, we go back up, right? X is zero, Y is one, that's our initial condition. F is the right-hand side of the first order equation. Let's take step sizes of 0 0.1, okay? And if we take step sizes of 0 0.1, then we have to make 40 steps, right? Because it's 10 steps for each unit at that point. So we're gonna have to make our N be 40. And you could rewrite this yourself, so it could, you know, if you give it the H and maybe you give it the target end point, then it'll compute the number of steps for you. Um, you, so you can do that yourself if you, if you would like to. But for this one, that, that's what I'm gonna do. So there we go. We run it and we see what happens. Notice it didn't return anything because I defined this this way. So our A, these are the X values and this should be evenly spaced partition points. And, and it is, right? It goes zero, 0 0.1, two, three, counts all the way up to four. That's exactly where we wanted to end, right? So I did steps of 0 0.1 here. All right, the Bs then, so the Xs are not a surprise, it's just, you know, we could have, you know, you don't have to run the script to do that. It's very easy to know what the X's should be, right? Um, but it's good to see that they came out right. And now the Y's, these are the ones that we really want, right? So that's what we called B, <coughs> excuse me. And so the first one is one. We said it's gonna dip a little, it does, it's below one. And then it's gonna increase a little, and it does. So this is just a list of Y values, right? But what would what we would really like to do is see the graph of this, right? So we wanna see the graph of it. To do that, we need to combine these two lists, so our X values and our Y values into points, into points. So I'm gonna make a loop to do that. There might be a better way. If you guys know one, that's fine. Um, 
I like to do these kind of simple minded coding. I'm not, I'm not a programmer. So uh, I'm going to define uh, PP for points. Okay. It's just an empty list here. This is just another way to do it. So whoops, 41 entries, 41 empty entries uh, in this list. And then I'm going to say, okay, let me make, make a loop again, right? So for K in range 41, I guess, right? What do we want to do? We want to say PP, the Kth entry of PP is going to be the point. Uh, let's give it like this. Where, what's it going to be? Let me make sure this is right. So it's going to be A, K, and then B, K. I might have to fix this. Um, but... We run that. Let's try to plot this now. So we want to plot these points PP. So the plot, when you're given just points, there, there's a couple different ways to do it. But one way is to do a list plot. All right. And the list plot here is going to be PP. Yeah, there we go. That looks perfect, right? So this just plots the dots. Plots the dots. And look, at they have pretty much the same shape as this. Now, how are we going to, maybe, wouldn't it be nice to get the dots on the slope field, right? We've already saved our slope field with a name. I did not save this plot with a name, but we can fix that, right? So we can call it G for graph. And then we want to look at both of them together. We can just say G plus SF. And there you go. There's the points on the slope field. And notice that the points are following pretty much the curve that they thought that we thought they would. And notice how they do, you know, it goes, it, it's, it's weathering this erratic slope field pretty well up here, right? Um, so it weathers it pretty well. So these are all dots, though. These are just dots. What if we want to connect these? Okay. If we want to connect these, you can add this um, command or this this option to the list plot that says uh, what is it? I believe it's plot joined, and then you just want to turn that on. So you say equals true, and yep, that turns it into a curve. So this curve now represents the solution of our initial value problem. All right. What if? What I mean? Again, I I, I made this kind of simple-minded. Just worked it out so that we could get a result. But this is how it works. If you were trying to approximate the value of the solution here at four, right at x equals four, the approximate solution is this number right here, right? The last number in the in the list of of the y values. Um, as you you just have to make sure that it really corresponds with what you thought it should, and it does, right? So that's why we compute the a's as well. Um, what if you want to change the initial values? Well, you have to go all the way back up here and then rerun everything else, right? So what if I wanted to start at a height of, let's do like three. So around three, what do we imagine the shape's going to look like? Well, it's going to be much steeper at the beginning, but it's going to follow, it's going to be, look how steep this is, right? What, that, what that's telling you is that there's an asymptote here. It's a curve. So maybe calling it an asymptote, maybe isn't the best way to describe it, right? But the behavior should be asymptotic in the sense that these curves become very close to vertical and then they're going to pinch down and, and where this is erratic, it's because the slopes are jumping over that asymptotic curve that I've described, right? So anyway, what if we start with three? So if we make this be three, we run it. You have to then update all these other cells, right? So A, now it starts at zero. That part's the same, zero to four. Uh, B though, now starts at three and then heads pretty much toward the same point, right? Um, and then we need to update our points again before we plot them. And look at what it's done here, oh boy. So it's very, it's so steep that the first step, the first step there is a huge jump and then it levels off. So actually um, this is maybe not the best approximation I mean, I don't think it's too off, but it's definitely not right. I mean, that's clearly that's clearly not what we would expect to happen. We would expect that to curve like this. So how do we fix that? Well, we have to take smaller steps and then a lot more of them, right? So this time, um, I don't want to see all these, <laughs> okay? Um, uh, we're going to have to update some other stuff here. So let's take steps of 0 0.01. Then we need to take 400 of these, right? So factors of 10 in each spot. I don't want to just, I don't want to see these because I don't want to print 400 of those, but I do need to change this. So it's probably not the best way to define this, right? To 401. And then our curve does much better. Okay. So um, that's a good example of indications from the graph that you need to update your step size 
or your number of steps or something, right? So um, this one looks much better than the previous one. All right, well, I will post these little snippets of code in the lecture, and I will add a little link where you can run this stuff on your own if you want to try this. Um, so, but other than that, I mean, it's just hopefully helps uh, visualize exactly what's going on and, and you guys can play around with it on your own. Other than that though, I'll see you guys in the next lecture and uh, talk to you soon.